Welcome back here with us on Trading Hour. As promised, let's get that conversation going with the Varun Lohachab of HDFC um, uh, Securities. He's the head of institutional research out there. Varun, great to have you on the show. Thank you for joining in. So let's get uh, the Q4 curtain razor out of the way. I mean, uh, with what expectations are you going in? And broadly, sort of just give us a sectoral view as well. Where might we see positive surprises and uh, which are the areas that perhaps could be, you know, a bit subdued? Yeah, hi, Surabhi. So overall, I think Q4 will be a reasonable quarter. Uh, you know, uh, our, our preview says that we'll see around 20% earning growth for our coverage universe, which is um, actually almost similar to what we had in Q3. I think the issue would be more from Q1 when uh, you will stop seeing margin increase on a YOI basis in a lot of sectors because the benefit of lower commodity prices will uh, will be over by then. But Q4 should be fine. In terms of sectors, uh, banks uh, should should do okay. Uh, you know they will still have a double digit YOI earnings growth as a sector, especially large banks uh, will continue to uh, do well. Uh, if you look at other large sector, IT is expected to be subdued. We have already seen uh, DCS coming up with a decent set of numbers, but we expect others to report slightly subdued sort of a growth, uh, single digit kind of earning growth for the sector. Uh, cement again would be slightly, would be okay on a YY basis, but sequentially may not see big numbers because there has been a pricing decline on a Q1Q basis, but volumes have picked up. So cement will be more like Q3. Oil and gas had a record uh, sort of a Q3 if you look at uh, when all the segments of oil and gas did very well. And that was the main uh, sector which pulled up the overall uh, you know, market earning growth in Q3. We expect Q4 to be slightly lower given OMCs will now see lower profitability on a Q1, Q basis. YOI basis, this will still be a good quarter. Consumers were expected to remain weak both on staples and discretionary barring select categories like jewelry which are still doing well but categories like qsr apparel and all are still struggling fmcg is still struggling we expect that to pick up slightly from uh, next quarter uh, chemicals will be subdued this quarter but again some pickup expected from next quarter and base also gets favorable uh, i think one sector which will continue to do well is capital goods uh, and real estate we have seen very good momentum out there in businesses across and we have seen some of the companies uh, giving the similar in quarterly updates as well. So overall, I think a reasonable uh, sort of a quarter and uh, going to be more bottom up from here. We had written in our note in February that, uh, you know, the easy money in markets is over uh, the way we had last year. And now it's going to be more stock specific and uh, slightly more modest return at aggregate level. But you will still find some stocks uh, going up 20-30%. Uh, in, in six months' time and some may be falling now 20-30%, unlike last year when everything was going up. Mm. So any uh, interesting ideas, Varun, that you would like to highlight before we kickstart this earnings season, since it's all about individual stocks? Yeah, so not so much from a result perspective. Uh, you know, we tend to take at least a 6 to 12 month uh, sort of a view on uh, on stocks, but I'll tell you some of the spaces and stocks that we are uh, positive on. Some of the market intermediaries, the capital marketplace, we still continue to like. So MCX, BAC, CDSL, all three are there among our top picks. From the infrastructure, cap goods, real estate, which is another theme which we are positive on. Uh, we continue to like uh, among the large cap, LNT and Cummins, and among the smaller caps, uh, you know, Ashoka, Buildcon, NCC. On the real estate side, we still continue to like Shoba a lot. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's on 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 some of the names uh, in chemicals. We like Neogen and Aether Industries. So it's uh, every every sector we are still finding some opportunities on the auto side. Uh, while at the aggregate sector level, now we are not as positive as we were six twelve months back, and we we have cut some weights, but we still like Maruti and uh, M and M out there. So. Uh, it's a mix of uh, stocks. Now you have to do more stock picking in each of the sector rather than just buying the whole sector. In real estate, you said you like Shobha. Now, a stock which has been doing well off late has been Prestige. Uh, they beat their annual guidance in FI24 by, I think, close to about 60%. Their NCR foray has been fairly successful. Uh, so have you looked at you know Prestige and would you like to compare Shobha versus Prestige? 
Yeah, so Prestige also we cover. It's it's a stock which we like. We have a buy rating. It's just that uh, you know it's it's now fairly well discovered that uh, you know it's a company which has been able to transition very well from being uh, you know one market player and they've entered Mumbai successfully and done quite well. So it has gone from uh, you know a, a small cap or a mid cap to a fairly decent size company now. Given the pre sales have gone close to twenty, have crossed twenty thousand crore this. Here, uh, whereas in case of Shoba, so we continue to like Prestige and we still have a buy rating out there. But in case of Shoba, we believe there is, uh, you know, still uh, market is yet to fully discover, uh, you know, the the stock and what the pre sales potential could be in FI25 for the stock. Given they have now a lot of new launches coming up in the next three to six months. So, uh, uh, so yeah, we we continue to like Prestige, but Shoba we see. More upside from a uh, you know from from a next twelve month perspective. Hmm. Varun, what's your take on the whole commodity rally? And it's been a big one, right? It's lasted for a while. Metals and you know the index itself is up uh, well over sixty seventy percent in the last one year. Individual stocks are still flying around, and then there is this move in the oil and gas space as well. What have you made of all this? This rise in commodities and. Uh, where do you see fundamental reasons to perhaps still continue with that long trade, or maybe even initiate a, a fresh investment? So, see, uh, so commodities after that spike in 22, uh, you know, when the when the Russia Ukraine thing started, and then they had a fairly bad, uh, you know, uh, nine months where a lot of the commodities fell, and the stocks also had a sharp correction, and uh, from those levels, uh, we are starting to see now, uh, you know. It's it's not been so recent. They have been doing well for six nine months. So stocks have moved ahead of uh, the the metal prices, but metal prices have started moving up only now. Uh, geopolitical tensions have again been part of the reason, but also to some extent the expectation that China will finally see you know some pickup, and we are starting to see some early signs of that in terms of the way PMI is shaping up out there. So it's possible that commodities uh, rally. Uh, you know, continues because frankly, if you look at from a slightly longer time frame, it's not that commodities are looking overheated. Frankly, they have not done as strongly in on a on a five year or a seven year time frame uh, as some of the other asset classes. So it's possible, held by geopolitical issues, that commodities continue to remain buoyant in FY25, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, even the stock prices in the sector will. Will be buoyant. So we have actually increased the weight, our weight in metals around three months back in our model portfolios, and we are continuing with that. Uh, any quick uh, picks in the metals pack? So, uh, so, so uh, you know, in our model portfolio, we have Tata Steel and Sale, uh, those two names. Apart Thank from you. Hindalco. Tata Steel, Sale, and Hindalco. Thank you very much, Varun, for joining in.